in it. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before, and a day we'll never see again. And as always, we believe that we believe in giving the Lord praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's blessing us. He's blessing us. Yes, he's blessing us. Every time we turn around, again, yeah, over and over, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's blessing me. He's blessing me again. Oh, Lord, I'm just, just, I'm just overwhelmed with joy this morning. Uh, many of you who are looking at us on Facebook, you see I have a, a new, uh, uh, what they call it, a flag up. It says we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is uh, Psalm, what is that? Psalm 8, 118, uh, chapter 24. Uh, on the other side of me, I got my heater because <laughs> it is a little chilly this morning. Uh, but I, I hope to have uh, uh, another banner uh, on on the on the other side of me. Amen, amen, amen. I, I want that banner on the right side of me, but they didn't have the one I wanted. But oh, hallelujah! I am just so excited about this lesson this morning. This lesson this morning is call to duty, and we're going to be looking at John chapter twenty-one. Uh, verses 15 through 25. John chapter 21, verses 15 through 25. And so we're going to have it read out of the Message Bible this morning, and I'm going to have the Message Bible uh, as read by Kelly Ryan uh, Dula on the uh, Bible Gateway. Listen in. Let me make sure I got my music turned off while I turn my, my, my mic up, or I turn my speakers up. All right, so I've got that turned off. Now let's hit the button. After breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Son, son of John, you love me more than me? Yes, Master, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. He then asked the second time, Son, son of John, you love me? Yes, Master, you know I love you. Jesus said, after my sleep. Then he said it the third time, yeah. Simon, son of John, do you, do you love, love me? me? Peter was upset that he asked for the third time, do you love me? And he answered, Master, you know everything I have to know. You've got to know that I love you. Jesus said, be my sleep. Yeah. I'm telling you the very truth now. When you were young, you dressed yourself and went wherever you went. When you get old, you have to stretch out your hand that someone else stretches you and takes you where you don't want to go. He said this to him at the time of death by which Peter would draw up his head. And then he commanded, follow me. Turning his head, Peter noticed the disciple Jesus loved following the right behind. When Peter noticed him, he asked Jesus, what's going to happen to him? Jesus said, if I want him to live until I come again, what's that to you? What's that to you? you. Follow me. Follow me. That is how the women got out among the brothers that this disciple wouldn't die. That is not what Jesus said. He simply said, If I want him to live until I come again, what's that to you? This is the same disciple who was eyewitness to all these things and wrote them down. And we all know that his eyewitness accounts is reliable and accurate. There are so many other things Jesus did. If they were all written down, each of them, one by one, I can't imagine a world big enough. Such a library book. Amen. Amen. That was John chapter 21, verses 15 through 25. It was read off the Gateway Bible audio version. And that was the Message Bible read by Kelly Ryan Delo, a Dela. Hallelujah. Welcome again, everybody. I'm so excited. This is Get 'em Radio. Get them ready, your Sunday school lesson edition. And I am your teacher and, and host, Pastor Mark McCoy. And I'm just so excited about this lesson this morning. I, I just can't wait to get started. It is, it's the call to duty, the call to duty. Uh, um, this call to duty, the key verse in this lesson 
is, is, is verse 15. He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my sheep. Jesus told him, say, feed my lambs, feed my lambs. Yes, yes, we're going to break that down in a minute. The key concept for this lesson this morning is Jesus wants us to share, I mean, to be sure, excuse me, to be sure that we love him. We'll take care of each other and pray for one another, just like he wanted Peter to do. I'm going to read that again. Jesus wants us to be sure that we love him. We'll take care of others and pray for one another, just like he wanted Peter to do. The keys to this message, the key to this message uh, is, is one, Jesus loves us and he wants us to love others. Two, we need to follow Jesus every day of our lives. Three, we should always listen. Oh, hallelujah. We should always listen. Listen to what God says. And, 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 and if we want to break this down for children, what God says and our parents say. And I'm, 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 I'm like, look. Your parents are your covering, and they are covered by God. So you need to listen, 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 listen. Oh, hallelujah. And so uh, as an introduction to this lesson this morning, I want to talk about this call to duty, this call to duty. I mean, it, it's just so awesome what, what God is doing in the life of Peter at this time, as well as in the life that we live. Right now in this world, we're living in a world that is faithless and inconsistent. It, it, is, it, it is challenging to be a committed follower of Jesus Christ. Running the risk of being ridiculed and, and scorned and rejected, we may be inclined to shy away from our duties in the ministry. It, it seems easy. It seems easy. It's easier, if you will, to, 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 to go along just to get along. Instead of being faithful to our calling. This, this call, this call of, of disregard and despondence may, may, may be, a, be attributed to the, 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 the coldness and love and loveliness, lovelessness that exist among us. Mm, mm, mm. People are cold, especially Christians. Our text, our text today reminds us that if we profess we to love Jesus Christ, then, then we have a call to duty placed upon us. Are you ready for your call to duty? You have a call to duty. The Gospel of John, the Gospel of John is a background. The Gospel of John is more than any other gospel highlights the divinity of Jesus as the Christ, as Lord and Savior. Here in this, 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 this 21st chapter, uh, after the resurrection of, of, of Jesus, Jesus calls Peter name and asks Peter to affirm his love for Jesus. Peter affirms, then Jesus gives him an assignment. This is Peter's call to duty. Jesus is calling on Peter, the very one who in chapter 13 of John denied him three times. He denied Jesus, but Jesus. Knowing this, even says to Peter, feed my lamb. Now, this is Peter's opportunity to show his love and dedication and commitment to being a follower of Jesus Christ. No more denial. And for us, we must no longer deny 
who Jesus is in our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, but he's my all in all. He, he's, he's my, my bright and morning star. He, he's, he's my, 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 my lily in the valley. Yes, he's my everything. So I can't deny that. And, and I don't think you ought to deny it either. We can't deny the call that he has on our lives. We must be his followers. And we are expected to answer this call of duty. Oh, yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready to accept this call to duty? Oh hallelujah. Let's let's get down into our text. We're gonna we're gonna break break our text down into three parts this morning. Uh we're gonna talk about affirming our calling, accept, accepting our calling, and accomplishing our calling. The learning facts that we're gonna deal with in this lesson is to summarize the, the conversation between Jesus and Peter at the Sea of Galilee. The biblical principles that we want to gain from this lesson is to explain the relationship between loving Jesus and imitating his grace and love through service. It's a call to duty, y'all. And then this week, we want to take away a daily application to demonstrate this gracious, self-sacrificing love of Jesus and one or more situations in our week ahead. So let's let's look at our text. Let's look at our text. We're, we're going to look at uh, uh, um, the first verses here, starting with verse 15. And in verse 15, uh, it reads, it reads in verse 15. Let me get my Bible up again. In verse 15, oh, hallelujah. Verse 15, it reads, it says in verse 15, come on, y'all, give me my Bible. I'm getting there, y'all. All right, go. Verse 15, listen to what he says. It says, after breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than me? Yes, master, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Now, 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 you know last week we talked about, about them having an encounter with Jesus at, at, at the Sea of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee. And, and, and they were out fishing, and, and Jesus told them to throw their nets on the right side, and they threw their nets on the right side, and then they caught all of these fish, and then they recognized who Jesus was. And Peter jumped out the boat, swam to Jesus, and the rest of the disciples pulled in the boat and then pulled in the fish. When they got there, Jesus had prepared breakfast. He had prepared breakfast for them, and, 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 and he prepared bread, and he prepared fish, and he, he blessed it. Then after he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, and after he gave it to them, they were blessed to eat. Now it's after the breakfast. And Jesus got to take care of some personal business with Peter. So he says to Peter, Peter, I'm Peter. Come here, man. Come here, man. We need to have a talk. We need to have a talk. You, you, you know that that was some that was some raw stuff you did, you know, before the the crucifixion. You know, Judas was bad now. You know, he kissed me and turned me in and snitched on me. But that, that was, he was a son of perdition. But but you, Peter, I already told you that that that, that you that 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 you are the rock. And, and, and then because of your faith in recognizing me as 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 the Christ, as the Messiah, your faith, that kind of faith that you had, Peter. I said, on, on that, I'm going to build my church. And so when you came with that funny bunny faith, scared for your own life, you're talking about, I go and die for you. But when it came time to, 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 to accept me and to, to tell somebody about me, you denied me before the rooster even crowed. It's okay, Peter. It's okay. 
I got a question for you. Here's my question, Peter. Do you love me more than these? Oh, hallelujah. As I'm preaching this, I'm looking out the window and, and the doves just flew by as I said that. Do you love me more than these? Well, I'm going to start at the back part of that question. What is these? Is these the, the other disciples? Is, is these the, 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 the fish? They caught a big load of fish, 153. Do you, do, you say, do you love me more than your friendships with others? Do you love me more than your work? Do you love me more than me? What is your deeds in your life? That Jesus got to come to you and say, do you love me more than thee? When Jesus used the word love, he used what we call that agape love, that, 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 that divine love. He was asking Peter, do you have divine love for me more than you have this divine love? For what you working on or who you around. We, 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 we got a problem in this world right now. Too many people have a divine love for things that they shouldn't be in love with. God told us that the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of power and love of status and all of that, that don't mean nothing because God will humble you. You remember that rich man who, 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 who had all of these riches and he asked Jesus, what must I do? Jesus said, go sell everything you got. And give it to the poor. That man walked away sad because he didn't love Jesus more than his wealth. Another man, rich man, he, he went around and, and he said, well, I'm doing good. I'm going to build me some barns and I'm going to fill them barns up with all kind of grain. And, 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 and then at night, God required his life. Do you love me more than these? Do you have that divine love? And then Peter answered. And Peter said, yes, master. You know I love you. Now, now, when you get down to the Greek, Jesus asked him, do you have agape love, unconditional love, divine love for me? But Peter responded and said, I got philae love for you. What, what's philae love? That's brotherly love. That's, that's, that's the kind of love that, that you give to your mom, your dad, and your brothers, and your sisters, your partners, your wives. That may, you don't know, no, wives are written, written husband. I'm sorry, that should be a topic. But, 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 but it's, it's, it's that kind of love. It ain't the same one that Jesus asked him about. Then Jesus asked him a second time. Let me, let me go before I go talk about this just for a second before I go to the, to, to the next question. You got agape love, you got filet love, and then you got eros love. Many people, they, they understand filet because they, they love their mom and their dad, they love their sisters and brothers, they love their friends. Many, many understand eros love because that's, that's that sexual love, that's that, 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 you know, I'm all in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. You know, that's that feeling. Feeling of love. That feeling. You love it because you feel it. Many of us, we, we, we have that eros love for, for all kind of stuff, but 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 that ain't true love. That's just the kind of love that gives you pleasure. But this love that Jesus is talking about, it goes beyond pleasure. That love that Jesus talking about is an unconditional love. It's a forever love. I love that song back in the day, always and forever. Yes, that's the kind of love that Jesus is talking about here. So 
Jesus is trying to get Peter to affirm his calling. To understand that he's got to be faithful and committed and called to do it. Now, one other thing, one other thing. When Jesus said to him, feed my lamb, that word feed, that Jesus used the first time it is called Bosco in Greek. And Bosco means to feed something or someone like we feed a pig. Can you tell me, you, you ready to feed my, my lambs like pigs? <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, you just, when you, when you feed my lambs like pigs, that means you just throw them anything. You don't study, you don't, you don't learn, you don't concentrate, you don't live what you're preaching. And we got a lot of folks who can preach a good word, who can teach a good word, but they're not living their lives as followers of Jesus Christ. They just feed you slop because it doesn't have an agape love behind it. Oh, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. So then Jesus says, then Jesus says to him a second time, he says, Simon, son of John, called him by his first and his last name. Do you love me? Mm, mm, mm. And Peter said, yes, master. You know I love you. And Jesus says, shepherd my sheep yes that 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 one this time this time peter peter resounds with yeah lord i i got pay you i understood what you said I, I i really love you god i really love you master i, I really do and jesus says shepherd my sheep this 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 Feed here, this feed my sheep or shepherd my sheep is, is a word called pop, pop, um, see if I can get it right. Pa meno. And that means to uh, lead and guide your sheep like a shepherd ought to. And as a shepherd, you, you can't just throw your sheep slop. You got to make sure your sheep have land to graze in. So that 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 your sheep feeder can 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 say like 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 David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me beside the still water. Yes. He he puts me in, in the grass, in the meadow, so I can eat everything I need. That's that's the kind of shepherd. He wants you to be. Now, now, can I talk to you for just a minute? I, I don't want to just talk to pastors and ministers because we all have a calling. We we are all called by God. We're peculiar people. But 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 those of us who who are parents, those of us who are managers at our jobs, those of us who are leaders in any realm or fashion, we have to be shepherd leaders. We have to be servant leaders. If you're not ready to serve somebody, you're not ready to lead anybody. I'm going to say that again. If you're not ready to serve, you're not ready to lead. And anyone who's out there that don't want to be a servant leader or don't want to be a shepherd leader over the people that he's or her or has been responsible for, you are missing the mark. You are not answering your call to do. How do I know this? Because that's Jesus. He came as a bond servant, not to be served, but to serve. And he gave up his life for, for your sins and my sins and the sins of the world. He gave up his life because he was ready to serve 
Are you ready to serve like that? That's your call to do. Your, your call to do. Peter got a third question from Jesus. And he said the third time, Simon, son of John. He called both his names again. That's you know, that's how that's how mama used to do you. You know, when she 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 called you Mark. You act like you don't hear. Then she said, Mark McCord, come here, boy. And then if she really was mad, she said, Anthony Mark McCord, bring up you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 that third time. If you don't respond then, something wrong with you. Back in the day. Old Pastor Mom, she had a streak in her. I'm talking about your mama. I can talk about my mom. She'll throw a skillet at you in a minute. <laughs> That's like when you don't answer. <laughs> you better be quick to duck that skillet. Hallelujah. <laughs> so he asked Peter this third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was upset that he asked for a third time, do you agape me? So Peter answered and said, Master, you know everything. You know everything that is to be known. You got to know that I agape you. That I have unconditional love for you. He comes back now and he says, Jesus says, feed my sheep. I tell you that the very the, the, the tell you the very truth now. When you were young, you dress yourself. And when, 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 wherever you wished, but when you get old, you have to stretch out your hands while someone else dresses you and takes you where you don't want to go. He said this, Jesus said this, to hint of the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he commanded Peter. Follow me. Follow me. That's it. God is asking us in his call to duty to follow him. He's shown that he's a servant leader. He's shown his unconditional love. Are you willing to follow him? Do you hear your call to do? Or do you want to just do things your way like you at Burger King? One of my mom's favorite scriptures, I'm going to say something positive about my mom. <laughs> it is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. All you have to do is follow. Trust it. Acknowledge it. Do you hear your call to duty? Jesus affirmed Peter's call. And he wants to affirm our call. Oh, hallelujah. Now, after him, your call has been affirmed, Peter, do you accept your call? Do you, do you really accept the calling that God has for you, Peter? When we answer the call by accepting the assignment, in the text, Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Jesus instructed Peter to take care of his followers. And, and, and so if we confess this and we accept our call to duty, 
our assignment is to go. Go. Go where you're supposed to go. Do what you're supposed to do. It don't matter how tired you are. It don't matter about time. God will redeem the time. I've heard people say, well, well Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark, man, I, I'm ready to go to the jail. I'm ready to go down there and minister at the jail. But, but I've got so much I'm doing, I just don't have time. I say, brother, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't understand that. If that's what you, you hear God calling you to do, how can you say you don't have time? If you make a step forward and effort, he'll make a way out of nowhere. Pastor Paul just said, are we ready to go all the way, all the way with the Lord? If you want to accept this call, you got to go all the way. And the only way you can accomplish this call is that you trust the Lord with all your heart. Love him. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart and your soul and your neighbor as yourself. Treat others like you want to be treated. Forgive others so that you might be forgiven. Confess your sins and, and know that, that God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you all unrighteousness. And if you're walking around talking about, well, I'm a preacher, I'm a teacher, I'm a pastor, I'm this and I'm an apostle, and you say you ain't got no sins, you're a liar, and the truth ain't in you, and you're making God a liar. So we all need to confess. We all need to be forgiven, and we all need to forgive others that we might be forgiven. Minister Denise, thank you for your comment. She said, we got to surrender our minds, our bodies, and our souls to God in order to do this thing. And then God promised us that he'll work it in us both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. We got to work on our own salvation and fear and sin. He'll do it. And then we can say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You'll be able to say, my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. You can say, I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed coming out. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the country. You can say, I'm blessed and highly faith because you have committed yourself to accept this call. God's going to give you everything you stand in the need of to accomplish it. And he gives it to us even before we ask. Because he says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to not give you any harm, but to give you hope and an expected future. I stand on tiptoe anticipation for what God is getting ready to do. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 God. We're going to do something. Because I have accepted my call. I heard my call to duty, and I said, yes. So the text goes on, and it says, turning his head, Peter noticed the disciple Jesus loved following right behind. When Peter noticed him, he asked Jesus, Master, what's going to happen to him? Why are we worrying about what's going to happen to somebody else, Peter? Are you tripping off of what everybody else is doing? You just do what you call to do. We, we are unique snowflakes that God has called to do whatever we call our hands to do. Don't worry about what's in somebody else's hands. Look at what's in your hands. Like, like God told Moses at the Red Sea, look at what's in your hand. What's in your hand? It's the staff. 
He says, raise that stack. Because nothing is impossible for God. He raised that staff and parted the Red Sea. But you let God use you and don't worry about how he using everybody else and doing no. That, that, that breeds envy and jealousy and all of that. And that's why we got so many schisms and isms up in the church. Because you worry about what somebody else is supposed to be doing. Always shaking your head and your neck. You should be doing. Don't be worrying about what other folks ought to be doing. Do what you're supposed to do. And guess what? The only one you need permission to do what you're called to do is the one who called you. Yes. You have to understand. Romans 8.28. All things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So what you waiting on? You scared you're going to make mistakes? Oh, God will make that work for your good. Step out on faith. Do what God has called you to do. And when you do that, he'll work all things together for good, for his glory, because God is good. Hallelujah. So then Jesus answered Peter and said, if I want him to live until I come again, what's that to you? Follow me. That's it. Don't be worried about other folks. Follow me. And, and so that, 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 when Jesus said, I, I, if I want him to live until I come again, he was talking about John. And, 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 and then the rumor got started. That's how the rumor got, got going. It says the rumor, that, that is how the rumor got out among the brothers and the disciples that, that this disciple wouldn't die. But that is not what Jesus was saying. He was simply saying, if God wanted, if I want him to live until I come again, what is that to you? Don't be worried about what other folks doing. You do what you folks to do and make it do what it do. Oh, I can testify right now because everybody can't get up here on Facebook and conference calls and, and call out a ministry and pastor people all over the world and, and minister to folks. Folks can't do that. They can't even comprehend it. All they can comprehend is pastoring in a church, in a church building. But God, has provided technology through man that we can talk to people all over the world at the same time talk to local people. Oh, hallelujah. And he's equipped my hands to work on the computer. He's equipped my hands to deal with the phones. He equipped my hands to be able to, to put up displays and put lessons together and share that with people with love, with joy, with enthusiasm, so that they might be fed no matter where they are. Somebody right now may be sitting on your couch. You don't want to go nowhere. You can't go nowhere, whatever reason. And you just listening to this word. While we got other people right now at church with their pastor, listening to this word because that's what God has equipped me to do. And I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. So finally in this lesson, he says, this is the same disciple talking about John who was eyewitness to all the things and wrote them down. And we know that his eyewitness account is reliable and accurate. When you've been called, see, Peter had his calling, but John had another calling. And his calling was to write this stuff down accurately. And we can rely on his testimony because God, Jesus, allowed him to live a very long time. 
And finally, the scripture says, there are so many other things Jesus did. If they were all written down in each of them one by one, I can't imagine a world big enough to hold such a large library of books. We have the cloud these days. And you can put stuff on the cloud. And every, you can share that information with everybody. But I'm here to tell you what I know about Jesus and what he's done for me. If I were to sit here and count all of my blessings one by one, a thousand years would pass before I would finish telling all that he's done for me. But just for a little while, if you allow me, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Yes, he has healed me from all my disease. He has saved my soul. He has made me whole. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So here's my question. Are you ready to accept your call to duty? As I was meditating this morning, a song came to my heart. It's an old song. Because you should have this answer. The old song, if you're ready for your call to duty, you should be able to answer, yes, I'm ready. That was a song by Barbara Mason back in, when I was a little child, and it says, and it says, I don't even know how to love you, just the way you want me to, but I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready to learn. Yes, I'm ready to learn to fall in love. To fall in love. To fall in love with you. See, I don't, I don't even know how to hold your hand. Just, just, just make me understand. But I'm ready to learn. Yes, I'm ready to learn, to hold your hand, make you understand, to hold your hand right now. Yes, I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to accept my calling. I'm ready to do God's will in my life. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we heard your call to duty and we're going to be like Isaiah. When he heard the call to duty, he said, here am I, send me. Yes, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready to learn how to love you. I'm ready to learn how to love and feed your sheep. I'm ready to learn, God, how to hold your hand. Yes, Lord, I'm going to hold your hand. The songwriter said, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Thank you, Lord, for getting me ready for my call to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The thought to remember, feed the flock while following the good shepherd. Before we close this recording, we want to pray the prayer of salvation with you. Please pray this with me. Dear God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sin. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. You have accepted your call to duty. Facebook, be blessed and always be a blessing. If you want to join us on the conference call to discuss this lesson, to share your thoughts or give your testimony or even prayer requests, you can call us at 619-639-4733. Again, 619-639-4733. We thank you for joining us on the God in the Midst Get them Radio Sunday School Lesson. Share it with your friends. Tell somebody about it. And be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.